Okay. Uh, in engineers, in this part, we're going to continue on with the metabolic map, and we're going to specifically fo uh, focus now on triglycerides and fats and how the metabolism of fats is occurring and how it's intertwined with this pathway. So, you know, within our body, we store fats in the form of triglycerides. So now let's talk about. Usually, we don't refer to them as fats. We refer to them primarily as lipids. That's the more common scientific term that we should utilize here is lipids. Now, lipids. When we take lipids in into the body, right, and we store them inside of our adipose tissue or maybe in a little bit in the liver tissue, you store it in the form of what's called triglycerides. Now, triglycerides, let's write this down here. Triglycerides, I'm going to uh, actually abbreviate it, and sometimes they also refer to triglycerides as triacylglycerol. So I'm going to write that down, but then I'm going to just talk about, so the, the actual name that I'm going to refer to is triacylglycerol. But I want you to understand that this is the same thing as me talking about triglycerides. It's, it's a synonym, okay? So me saying triglycerol versus triglycerides doesn't matter. But I'm going to use this term to make everything more, you know, small so we can fit everything. T-A-G. That's what we're going to talk about. Okay. So let's say here in the body I have this thing called a T-A-G a triacylglycerol, a triglyceride. Let me draw the structure of this very quickly. Just, you know, a very raw diagram. Let's say here this is the head, and then there's another component here. So a triacylglycerol is made up of two components. But what I'm gonna do is, let's say that I'm in the uh, fasting state, I haven't eaten for a while, and I need some energy. And my carbohydrate source has already used up a lot of my glycogen, I already broke down a lot of my glucose, all right? So I've already done glycogenolysis, I've already done a lot of uh, glycolysis, a lot of transition, Krebs, electron transport chain. Now I need to move on to my second source of energy, my lipids. What's going to happen? Okay, I'm going to break this triglyceride, but I'm going to break it down into its two constituents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this ester bond here. Between these, do you see these little, like, little tails here? These little tails are the fatty acids, and that head is the glycerol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it into its individual components. One is I'm going to break it into a component called glycerol and to stay consistent we'll show it as like this little head like that all right the other component i'm going to break it into is these fatty acid tails so these fatty acids which are like those little tails all right so we'll have that little thing there just to you know keep it consistent with the diagram now if i'm breaking down a triglyceride or a triacylglycerol into glycerol and fatty acids what is that oh triacylglycerol to a glycerol and fatty acids oh that's lipolysis. Perfect. Man, it's amazing. So look at this. Me going this way and me going this way, this is lipolysis. It's that simple, right? Breaking the ester bond and breaking these two components. Now, here's the cool thing about this uh, glycerol and fatty acids. This pathway of going from triacylglycerols to glycerol and uh, triacylglycerols to fatty acids is reversible. So let's say that I'm in what's called the fed state, right? So I'm eating. You know when you eat, you're, there's a hormone in your body called insulin that's being produced. And one of the primary metabolic effects of insulin is it wants to get a lot of glucose into our cell. But it can stimulate specific enzymes that are responsible for what's called lipogenesis. So what it can do is it can take these fatty acids and this glycerol and fuse them together. You know what that's called? Let's look. Oh, fatty acids, glycerol, to triacylglycerol. That's lipogenesis. So the opposite pathway, me going in this direction, that is actually going to be lipogenesis. And me going in this direction, this is lipogenesis. So it's so beautiful. Now, here's the next thing. The glycerol, does it just, what happens? Well, we have to integrate it into this pathway. How do we integrate it? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this glycerol and I'm gonna convert it into this molecule. You know, glycerol is actually a three carbon structure. It's actually a three carbon structure. Well, what else do we see a three carbon structure? Right here, dihydroxyacetone phosphate. That's not by chance that I put it there. Look what happens to this guy. He gets converted into dihydroxyacetone phosphate. When he gets converted into dihydroxyacetone phosphate, what can happen? Okay, well, two things can happen. One, I didn't really mention it yet, so we're gonna focus on the going downwards, but we can go up. I'll mention that in a little bit. But you know one thing that can really happen, it's really cool, glycerol can actually get converted into DHAP, and then where can it go? Let's follow the arrows down. It can get converted into glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate, 
or over here to glyceride I3-phosphate. The glyceride I3-phosphates can get converted to pyruvate. Pyruvate to acetyl-CoA goes through the Krebs cycle, goes and makes NADHs and FADH2s, and makes ATP. Oh, man, that's cool. All right, that's one thing. So this can lead to glycolysis. What about fatty acids? Well, fatty acids are very long chain, more common in the body. They're usually in the form of 16 carbon fatty acids, which we call palmitoyl coa or palmitoleic acid. What can happen is these fatty acids, they get broken down into two carbon sequences. Where did I see two carbons before? Acetyl coa. And look, we can break this down by chopping this actual 16 carbon fatty acid into two carbon fragments. You know what they call this step here? When you're breaking it down, you're oxidizing the fatty acid. This is called a special step called beta oxidation. Okay? Beta oxidation. Okay. That's a beautiful thing there. Now, here's another thing. Let's say that you're eating too much, you know, you're cranking down Hershey's crunches or you know, Reese's Pieces, I like Reese's Pieces, they're pretty good. But anyway, you're taking in so much glucose, a lot of glucose. Our body can only utilize so much of that glucose to make ATP. And then after we take in so much glucose, our body starts shunting it into making it into fat. So this pathway of, pathway of glycerol going into DHAP, DHAP can actually get converted into glycerol. And if DHAP is converted into glycerol, and glycerol can actually be converted into triglycerides, what is that? That's lipogenesis. So really, this structure here, right? This structure here, I should have blue, sorry. If I'm taking this DHAP, if it's going over here and trying to make glycerol, this is a prelude to making glycerol, and glycerol is the precursor to make triglycerides. Same thing. Let's say I take acetyl-CoA molecules, and I go through the fatty acid synthesis process. So if I want to be able to synthesize the fatty acids, these fatty acids can be utilized right, to combine with glycerol and make triglycerides. So if we really wanted to, we could say this is fatty acid synthesis. That's what you really could say. This is fatty acid synthesis. But it's, a, it's necessary in order for the triglyceride synthesis to occur. And this one is actually glycerol synthesis, if you really want to say that, right? And again, glycerol synthesis is a precursor in order for the making the triglycerides. Okay. So if we really wanted to be specific, we could say this is fatty acid synthesis and this is glycerol synthesis, but it is necessary for making triglycerides. So technically this whole way is lipogenesis and this whole way is lipogenesis. Okay, that covers that. But you know what's really crazy? And individuals uh, who are like uncontrolled diabetics or they've been starving themselves or they're like on the Atkins diet and they're not taking in enough carbohydrates. What happens is their body starts actually running out of carbohydrates to utilize for energy that they start breaking down excessive amounts of fat. And whenever these people's gl blood glucose levels go down really, really low, there's a special precursor in the Krebs cycle. We're not gonna spend a lot of time, we're just gonna mention his name. His name is called OAA. And same thing, he would be right here, OAA. In situations in which we have low blood glucose levels, OAA is not involved in the Krebs cycle and it goes to make glucose. It actually goes through another pathway we'll talk about. So it goes to make glucose eventually. Well, if OAA isn't there, the acetyl-CoA can't go through the Krebs cycle. And so a lot of this acetyl-CoA starts building up. When it starts building up really, really, really high, it gets shunted into another pathway. Look at this, this is beautiful. Our body is amazing, okay? Our brain primarily runs on glucose, so they don't really like to break down fatty acids, but our brain can use another molecule, which is really special. Look at this. Let's say I take this acetyl-CoA and I fuse them together through special steps. And I make another molecule, which is called ketone bodies. You know these ketone bodies? We talked about them in great detail. There's what's called acetoacetate. And then there's another one, which is called beta hydroxy butyrate. What happens? I can take this acetyl-CoA molecules and convert them into ketone bodies. What is that called? Okay, let's see if we can find it here. Acetyl-CoA to ketone bodies is called ketogenesis. Man, this is awesome, right? So then if I'm going this way, look. Sorry about that. If I'm going from acetyl-CoA and I'm making these ketone bodies, what is this called? That's called ketogenesis. Now, we can form these ketone bodies. Why are we making these ketone bodies? Because they're good for the brain. So when they go up to the brain or in the muscle tissue, so in our skeletal tissue, skeletal muscle tissue, or our brain or our cardiac muscle tissue, 
it can utilize these ketone bodies during a starvation state or diabetes mellitus or just whenever our body needs it. It doesn't prefer to use it, but it can. Well, in these ketone bodies, we have to utilize them for energy. Well, how do we do that? We break them right back down to acetyl-CoA. And when we break them right back down into acetyl-CoA, that can go through the Krebs cycle and generate energy in the brain and in the skeletal and in the cardiac muscle. So, if I want to go from the ketone bodies to the acetyl-CoA, then what do I need to do? Okay. Well, if I want to go from the ketone bodies to acetyl-CoA, that's called ketolysis. Huh. I'm just breaking the ketone bodies back into acetyl-CoA fragments. So again, this process here of me going back up this way is called ketolysis. All right. You know what else is really cool with these acetyl-CoA molecules? They're really amazing. I really do think these are so cool. There's one more thing that can happen. You know acetyl-CoA is a precursor for being able to make cholesterol? Huh. So I can even make cholesterol. Wow. I can make cholesterol? Well, why would I want to make cholesterol? Because cholesterol is extremely important. You know cholesterol is important for being able to make what's called bile salts, which is important for the emulsification process. In other words, trying to be able to help in the, uh, assist in the digestion of fat. So bile salts are really important. You know cholesterol, there's a lot of hormones. They're precursors to the hormones. So testosterone, estrogen, progesterone. So they're precursors to steroid hormones. Also, they're really even, they're not just that, but they're also important with inside of the actual cell membrane structure. So they contribute to the cell membrane. So a lot of different things. Well, we can convert acetyl-CoA to cholesterol, which is a very important pathway. Okay, so what is that called when I go from acetyl-CoA to cholesterol? Okay, if I go from acetyl-CoA to cholesterol, that's called cholesterol synthesis. Nice. So I'm just going to go this way. That's it, okay? And again, what is this process good for? Acetyl-CoA going to cholesterol is important for the cell membrane structure. It's important for steroid hormones. It's important for bile salts. And again, this process is called cholesterol synthesis. Okay, so what have we gone over within this part of the video? We covered how we can break down triglycerides into glycerol and fatty acids, which is called lipolysis. We talked about how glycerol can be utilized within this process to be converted into DHAP, right? And how that DHAP can go through the glycolytic pathway. We also talked about how these fatty acids undergo this beta oxidative path process to get converted into acetyl-CoA, go through the Krebs cycle and generate large amounts of energy. We also talked about what happens whenever too much acetyl-CoA builds up. Right, and because we, we act, the OAA gets converted into glucose, our body needs glucose, the brain primarily runs on glucose, but whenever our skeletal muscles and our cardiac muscles need to contract, we can convert the acetyl-CoA into ketone bodies like acetoacetate and beta-hydroxybutyrate. That's called ketogenesis. But then when we get them into the brain and we get them into the skeletal and cardiac muscles, we want to break them down into acetyl-CoA. That is called ketolysis. And our body also has the ability to make cholesterol from acetyl-CoA, which is called cholesterol synthesis. And again, that's important for making bile salts, steroid hormones, and even a component of the cell membrane. And the last thing is, is whenever we're taking in too much glucose, too much of that glucose, we can shunt some of the acetyl-CoA to making fatty acids, and we can shunt some of the DHAP to make glycerol. If we do this, it's called fatty acid synthesis. If we go from DHAP to glycerol, it's glycerol synthesis. But again, it's all beginning into this whole process where glycerol and fatty acids will fuse and form triglycerides, which is called lipogenesis. All right, engineers, in this video, we talked about how fats, or lipids specifically, are integrated into this whole metabolic map pathway. In the next video, we're gonna talk specifically about how proteins or amino acids are involved in this pathway, and then we'll finish up with gluconeogenesis. All right, I'll see you in a little.